Well, when I was a kid, I spent a lot of time at Green Lake running laps on the trail. I had a rubber raft in my trusty duster, my 72 duster, and I'd go out in the lake and do schoolwork while floating out in the middle. More recently, two of my daughters lived in apartments with roommates close to Green Lake, but it's not the same. Huge numbers of homeless encampments. There's a big one on the west side of the lake right now. And also, I used to play a lot of basketball, both in the gym and on the outdoor court at Green Lake. And it's just important for us taxpayers to have access to basic necessities. I got an email from a mom. Her name's Kristen. And she joins us here on the Dory Monson Show. Hey, Kristen, it's great to talk with you today. You as well. Hi. Okay, so tell me about your experience. You took your your uh, child. I don't know if it's a son or daughter. You said your child. How, how old is your kid? Uh, she is 18 months. Okay. All right, um, so you went, to, you went to Green Lake, and t- mm-hmm. <laughs> tell me what happened. T- tell everybody what you told me in your email. <laughs> I, we were playing at the playground there, you know, um, and I had to use the restroom. Um, so I walked to the community center that is there. Um, there are signs posted at the community center, um, temporary signs saying that the facilities are open, um, but then they are also cordoned off with tape for some reason, and I was very confused why they would say that the bathrooms are open but also cordoned off. Yep. So I went to ring the doorbell of the community center and asked if I could use the restroom. I was carrying my child, um, and the woman behind the desk of the community center said that um, the bathrooms are currently reserved for our unhoused neighbors. Um, and I was a little bit taken aback because I, I, I didn't really know how to respond. And I just said, okay. Um, and she directed me to the porta potties that Ugh. are stationed by the parking lot there. Um, and I, actually, yeah, I, I, I hate porta potties. <laughs> you know, yeah, they're not great. Um, they're even worse when they're not clean. <laughs> Um, they were literally glistening with urine. Um, oh. There was urine-soaked toilet paper all over the place. There was garbage all over the place. There was beer cans. They were disgusting. And I was expected to set my child down and just hope that she doesn't touch anything. <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> that I is such an bathroom. important point. Yeah, I mean, I said I hate porta potties but I remember a couple of times when our girls were little – and you can't leave a one and a half year old outside while you go use it. Oh, oh I can't even Absolutely imagine not. bringing a, a eighteen month old into one of those. Oh, it was disgusting. It was it was absolutely disgusting. You know, it's 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 one thing to have porta potties that people have to use. It's another thing to just not keep them clean. Like you're next to a playground, people have to use the bathroom next to a playground. <laughs> oh man, you know. Yeah, and look, uh, every one of us has compassion for the homeless. I, I know you do. I know that I do. But this this absolute takeover, I mean, we're the taxpayers. We're the ones who are paying for these facilities. We pay a lot in our property taxes to King County Parks. I don't know if Green yeah. Lake's King County or Seattle Parks, but, but we pay a lot for that. And mm-hmm. then when we get filth in return, it's kind of a slap in the face. A little bit. You know, it's, it's a public bathroom, and it should be available for all. You know, unhoused, housed, people traveling through town, it doesn't matter. It is a public bathroom, and this is basic human health. We cannot be expected to just go in the streets, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, it uh, should be available for everybody. I, I, I agree with you, but there's also a danger in that, Kristen, because we have had some horrific crimes. I, I've become friends with a... A young woman, she was using the public restroom at Golden Gardens. She was training for a marathon. And a homeless person who had just moved here from, I think, Arizona, he he tried to brutally sexually assault her, and she fought back. But there was another homeless person who, who raped a woman at a, at a restroom at a car dealership. Uh, I agree with you that they should be open to all, but I also would have – real concerns for my wife or for any of my daughters just given some of the crimes that have happened with homeless people in in these public restrooms those are concerns that are valid you know yeah, yeah I, I absolutely hear that um you know my my mostly my takeaway from this is that there's showers at these facilities as well and um i've actually had to use these showers my water heater broke once and i had to get ready for work so i had to go to the community center and i had to use their showers 
Um, and I'm wondering if I would still be extended that privilege um, mm. today, or are those showers still just reserved for our unhoused neighbors? <laughs> yeah. Those were her words. <laughs> but, and, and what we're doing is we are prioritizing people who are committing illegal behavior. Well, I mean, you're not supposed to camp at Green Lake. Uh, most of them are, are, I mean, the vast majority are heroin meth users. And it's sad, but it's true. I don't care how much public officials want to want to deny that. And what you said in your email, you said, I'm just hoping some people ask questions of Seattle Parks and Rec and holds them accountable to change the current policies and hopefully keep our parks clean for our children. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't know when that's going to come back, Kristen. Neither do I. It's really, really frustrating that I have to drive all over the damn city to try and find a clean and safe park for my child to play in. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it is it is just really, really frustrating. And I feel like we give them just oodles and oodles and oodles of money and we don't see any return. I remember <laughs> this is a long, long time ago when I was a very young talk show host. But I came on the air and <laughs> this seems so simple and naive in comparison to what we're dealing with today but my wife and I took our girls to the arboretum and we spread out a blanket and one of my daughters picked up a cigarette butt in the grass and I was disgusted by that and I was horrified and I was thinking man that's like uh, a dream situation compared to the heroin needles <laughs> and everything I mean I was so naive back then thinking that that was a serious problem but it was to me Back then, I don't know what I'd do if my kids were little and we had to check for heroin needles and, and all of that every time we tried to go to yeah. a park. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It's um, apparently my mother used to do this with, with the part that I played at when I was a kid because we didn't live in a great area either. Um, and that's just what she, you know, raised me doing. Um, yeah. And now I'm doing the same thing. Um, you know, I will, will never in a million years let my child run around Seattle park with no shoes on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, which I used to be able to do. <laughs> sure. Um, and it's, yeah, I just don't see, I don't think we're seeing a return. We give them so much money and our parks are filthy. Yeah. Um, that being said, a lot of people are concerned about the amount of human waste that we have in our parks. Um, and if we're so concerned about the amount of human waste that we have in our parks, why do we not have adequate bathroom facilities for people to use? You know, there could be a win <laughs> yeah, for everybody. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody who's responsible for these policies, they claim to care about the planet. But there's a string of RVs on the west side of Green Lake right now, and they they often just empty their holding tanks right in the street next to them, and that runs off to who knows where. But I'm sure some of it I've gets heard into the lake. In Green Lake too. Yeah, yeah, it's just awful. Well, I'm glad so. you reached out to me. I just think it's so important to remind people of what's happening and see if we can one of these days get some change because right now things are going in the wrong direction yeah i I, parents just want to use the bathroom and it would be nice if we had clean ones to do so it's a reasonable request (laughs) it's a reasonable request have a nice day (laughs) there you go all right well chris it's really nice talking with you i appreciate it thank you take care hey and tell your dad i said hi i heard he's a big listener I, I will. Uh, Terry Stewart, he might be listening. Hi, Dad. Okay. Hey, Terry. <laughs> I appreciate you. All right, Kristen, all my best to you and your family. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. That's Kristen who had to deal with filthy porta potties with an 18-month-old because we're giving all our priority to the homeless around Green Lake. Uh, your thoughts, you can text me, 98973. Lots more to come here on the Dory Monson Show.